Hey guys, it's Kylie and today I want to tell you about my new hobby and that is abstract painting. I took this up because I was having so much fun and getting so inspired by watching other artists take on abstract painting on Instagram mostly. Um, somebody that really inspired me was Caroline Kelso of Made Vibrant. She's at C Kelso on Instagram and I actually have a piece of hers in my office. I took it down so that you could see it. But this is an abstract work from Caroline that I ordered from her a long time ago when she was selling prints and I absolutely love it. Then I discovered other artists like, um, there's one in particular called Britt Bass. I'll show a picture of a painting of hers right here. And she also has incredible paintings that are truly pieces of heaven on earth in my honest, humble opinion. A couple of months ago, I started trying this for myself with just like really cheap acrylic paints paintbrushes, and palette knives. And I wasn't loving it. So I'll show you some of the pieces that I've created. Not bad, not horrible, right? This is yet more abstract art that I created. And I created a sister to this piece. This is a sister. And together, if they were to be hung side by side on the wall, this is what they would look like. This was a piece that I posted on Instagram. I did add lettering to it and I actually really like this one. And then these are just some little mini abstract paintings that I've done just while I'm on the phone actually with my best friend. But I can't tell you how many have ended up in the garbage because I just didn't like them and I wasn't happy with them. And it was because I was just using the wrong tools. I had really boxed myself in and made myself think that I absolutely had to use paintbrushes and I had to invest in really nice paints or oils and the colors weren't great and I was using cheap paint and that's why I wasn't happy with the final product. And then I discovered the secret weapon that I will show you when I talk about the materials that I use. But I, for the very first time just recently, like two weeks ago, created something that I'm 100% proud of and excited and have since hung it up in my bedroom. So I'll show you that now. You can't see it. Very happy. Very happy with this. I'll just go ahead and tell you that whenever I mentioned on Instagram that I was trying out abstract painting, everyone was like, that's so hard. I could never be happy with a painting. And wow, like it might look easy. It might look easy to some people, but it's not. And I can never do that. And I don't have that type of artistic style and that's not for me and but just a lot of I could never sentences and I at first could totally relate because I was feeling a lot of those same things then I realized no I think everyone in the whole wide world can be an abstract painter and can create beautiful abstract art doesn't matter if you have to sell it because let me tell you this is my hobby I'm not going to sell this stuff right now I have a selling addiction so maybe I'll be selling things in the future I don't know but ooh, I just hated hearing that so I made today's video showing you the materials that I use the materials that I use the process that I go through and my creative pet talk for you if you're thinking about creating art of any kind that is daunting or is intimidating or you feel like you could never so I don't know I hope you enjoy this video it's not a tutorial it's different than everything else I'm posting here on this channel but I just really wanted to make this video so I hope you enjoy it and let's start with the materials and these are the materials that I use I have this oil and acrylic paper it's Canson it is a canvas texture that's really, really nice to paint on. And I got this at Walmart, really good price point, a lot of paper in the pack, have this little paint palette, very used, but it still works, and just the 99 cent paints from the craft section. And this is just the color scheme that I'm going for today. You can choose whatever colors you want for your painting. And finally, we have my secret weapon, and that is the foam brush. The foam brush you can get for like a nickel or a dime at the craft store or the hardware store or wherever these are heaven sent for me for abstract painting and I'll tell you and show you 
why that is in just a moment. So I'm just laying down some paint on the palette and this might be the best part. Picking out the colors is probably my favorite part. Besides the awesome blending that we can do with the brushes. And I'm very excited to show you all of that. But before we can do that, you need to tape your paper or your canvas down unless you're using like a stretched canvas on wood because the heaviness of the acrylic paints and all of the different layers that you're going to apply and all of that stuff will cause your paper to buckle and go all wavy and it won't look super great in that pretty frame they're going to put it in so i'm showing you real time for the next few seconds and i'll speed it up a little bit about how I use these brushes to get a really smooth, blended, gorgeous, abstract painting that I actually like, which is a miracle, let me tell you. So the one downside with the foam brushes, I'll go ahead and say, is that they do absorb a lot of paint, so you end up using more paint. But in my opinion, it's worth it because I haven't been able, I don't have the magic touch with a paintbrush when it comes to creating abstract art. I've tried palette knives and paint brushes. I paint a lot with my fingers too, which you'll see later on. But so far, these foam brushes are really the ticket for me when it comes to creating a blended look. And there are a lot of different abstract styles that you could try to emulate. And for me, the ones that I'm drawn to are the really soft, blended, pretty, pretty pieces that are just perfectly blended. I can't say blended enough clearly, but I just couldn't achieve that with a paintbrush. So I have a couple other notes taken down here because this isn't very much a tutorial. It's more of a pep talk because acrylic abstract painting has kind of changed the game for me. It's definitely changed the way that I look at art and the way I look at myself and patience and all of that stuff. So I'm going to get cheesy on you, but it's going to be informative and educational if you're interested in taking up abstract painting as a hobby like I have. So the first thing is that you need to experiment. And I, like I said, I experimented with several different tools before I found foam brushes, which are my go-to tool. Some people like paint brushes, some people like palette knives, some people like, I don't know. I don't know what people like, but it's up to you as the artist to figure out what works best for you. So experiment, try different things, use different colors, all of that stuff. The second thing is you have to push through the ick and the crap because nine times out of ten you're not gonna like how it looks because we're our own worst critics and you have to push through and you have to keep making and keep creating anyway because it will get better and I can say this from experience because I created a a lot a lot of really bad abstract art let me tell you before I kind of honed in on my process gotta push through it the third thing is patience acrylic abstract painting especially if you're using oils because man oils take forever to dry but this takes patience because not only do you have to wait for layers to dry but you have to be patient with yourself when you're creating you have to know that maybe this will take me 15 minutes and I'll come out with something that I like maybe it'll take me an hour maybe it'll take me a couple days I have a humongous canvas that's now hanging in our bedroom that's like two by three feet and it took me a month to finish it just coming back to it and adding things to it and being patient and knowing that I wasn't gonna stop until I liked it so patience is key the next thing is layers with anything with lettering with painting of any sort you have to have layers so don't expect your first layer to be the final layer the perfect layer don't even expect your second or your third or sometimes even your fourth to be the perfect final layer you have to keep adding layers and keep giving it that giving it your love until it looks good the fifth thing I have is that imperfection is encouraged and imperfection is beautiful and we'll always see things that we do as imperfect. So I think it's important to start looking at imperfection as beauty, and then you'll be a lot happier with the things that you do. And then the final thing is that nothing is final. You can always go back and add to it and change it until it's something that you're happy with. So don't get too discouraged with any kind of art that you're, you're practicing because it will get better. Um, if you put your love and your heart into it. So cheesy, but that's my little message. 
While I let that painting dry, I went ahead and just started creating another one so that I didn't waste paint. And this one is definitely much more blended and much more soft and relaxing in appearance than the other one, and I love it. So this one was also created. This took me about 10 minutes. I'm a fast worker with anything, so also don't don't think that you have to do something in 10 minutes because I just happen to be kind of a speed demon when it comes to any and everything. So. Um, this is showing a couple different techniques just using the tip of the foam brush to get some lines and then also using my finger to get the white a little bit more opaque. I use a ton of white in my paintings because I love white. I'm drawn to white, drawn to light colors, pastel colors. So if you're wondering what happens with the paintings after I'm finished with them, there are a couple different things that I could find uses for. I'm planning on giving a lot of the paintings that I'm excited about as gifts to friends, not even Christmas gifts, just pop one in the mail and send it to somebody and hopefully it makes their day. I'm working on a few of those right now. Oh my gosh. If I ever do want to sell them, I'm scanning every single one of them in using my Canon printer. It has an amazing scanner, and I'll show you what a few of them look like. So this is what one of them looks like. This is another one, and a third one. These were three that I was very excited about, and I can even pull them into Procreate and letter on them if I want, and then make prints that way. So there are a lot of options. Sky's the limit when you're creating art that you like, that makes you happy and that fills you up and satisfies you and there's no pressure and I'm loving it like loving it it's made me more excited about lettering and other types of art in general so I hope that you all have enjoyed today's video as different kind of chaotic as it is I hope you've enjoyed it and got something out of it so leave me a comment and tell me yes or no are you gonna go out buy all the foam brushes and all the tools and all the 99 cent paints and try out abstract painting. I want to know. So I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys next Monday with another YouTube video.